We do chart. I'll, I'll talk about Justin it. Justin Martinez yeah. is going to come on and pitch the sixth inning for the Diamonds as they are down by two runs to Sonoma here. And they're going to start off. He's going to start off facing Marcus Bradley, the number nine hitter, and then Matt Hibbert and Matt Lococo here in the sixth inning. Martinez making his 15th appearance of the year. He's pitched 14 and a third innings. He's given up six earned runs over that time period. He's got a 3.76 ERA. In those 14 innings, he's walked 11 and struck out 16. His record is 2-0, and he's got one save. That pitch is high for a ball. It's 1-0. And, and uh, you want to discuss Point Streak and or how you can follow Yeah, pointstreak.com. Um, you know, you, you pretty much go there for the stats for all, my, all of minor league baseball, more or less, um, or at least the leagues that associate themselves with Point Streak. Um, you won't be able to, that I know of, uh, find um, one one count out of breath. individual, you know, head to head how a pitcher does with a with a certain batter, but uh, but you know what what we do here is that we chart our pitchers uh, so that we know you mm -hmm. know how a certain batter did and what we threw um, to the batter, and then you know Sonoma Bradley always has their scouts two. two and one. So Sonoma always uh, is sending out their scouts to see how, you know, and then when you, you, you're, then you're able to put that information together into a database. Uh -huh. But uh, r there's no way to chart if that pitch was outside or inside and oh, yeah. how the, the batter reacted. I mean, to really get into in-depth. 2-1 count. Martinez comes to the plate, and it's high for ball three. It's 3-1. Three and one. The, If you want to go to Point Streak, Point Streak for the Pacific Association, it's easy to do. You go to diamondsproball.com and click on stats on that homepage, and it'll take you right there. You can look at the individual stats for each team. You can pick up individual players. You can look at the lead leaders, standings, all kinds of things. That pitch is ball four, and Marcus Bradley takes first. So... An opening walk here to Marcus Bradley, and now there's a runner at first for Sonoma. There have only been three half innings where no runs were scored. <laughs> That's how you get to a 12 to 10 score in the top of the sixth. Well, I mean, you give up the safety, and then you know, you're down two. <laughs> so pretty much. Uh... We're at the top of the order here with Matt Hibbert. Bradley was his lead at, at first base. These are the two base stealers here, two leading base stealers for Sonoma at the plate and on first. Well, Martinez hasn't thrown a strike yet. That is a ball, 1-0. Galetti holding Bradley on at first. You would or he did throw one. Hibbert to see if he can make, make Martinez throw a strike before he swings. Let's see. Martinez throws over. The Sonoma stoppers have run wild. For most of the season, the Diamonds made a very clear effort to make sure they held those runners on base, and it has paid off. That much has paid off. They have not been running the bases like crazy. Here's this pitch, and it's high for a ball, and it's two balls and no strikes. Twelve to ten, Sonoma. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Runner at first. Two zero count on Hibbert. And nobody out. Marcus Bradley, the runner at first. Here he goes. Here's the pitch. Heiberger throws the second, and Bradley is in there. His speed and his jump, and Heiberger didn't really have much of a chance there. The throw did not catch Bradley. Bradley was in there before the throw got there, and so he's on at second base now with nobody out. The count on Hibbert is two balls and a strike. Rabbit eyes. The rabbit is making his rounds <laughs> as usual. Here's the pitch. A strike. It's two and two. If you haven't been with us before, the rabbit has appeared at two games before, at least two that I've, I recall, and he seems not bothered He's by human beings. He's batting a thousand he does. because he has not been hit yet. He just doesn't seem bothered by human beings. He's got to check out. He's, he's back for more baseball. That's what he's back for. 2-2 two -two pitch. High and inside. Hibbert leads back, and it's 3-2. and two. Justin Martinez in here following Skyler Shaw Fuss, who came in to replace Sam Agnew Wheeland. The pitch for Martinez. 
is strike three called. It was dropped by Heiberger. He tags uh, Hibbert in the batter's box, and so that's out number one. Marcus Bradley is on at second base. He walked and then stole second. Matt Lococo will step up here. He walked in the first inning, reached on an error in the second, and has grounded out twice. So he's 0 for 3, but has scored two runs. Runner at second, one out. He's twisting that bat like he's going to twist it into pieces. <laughs> Taps the dirt, he's ready to go. So Martinez with a walk and a strikeout. So far, this pitch is a strike and it's 0 1. No balls and a strike. Martinez looks back at Bradley at second. Mello dancing in behind him a little bit. Looks back again and again. And steps off the rubber. That's really keeping an eye on the guy at second. Looks in. Sees the Coco. Looks back at second and comes to the plate. And this pitch is swung on a missed. Strike two. It's 0-2 now on the Coco. On deck is Carranza, who has been a royal pain so far in this game. Two doubles, a single, three runs scored. Martinez set to go 0 2. The 0 2 pitch is high for a ball, and it's 1 2. Thirteen hits for the Diamonds, 14 hits for Sonoma, who leads by two runs, 12 to 10. Martinez wipes off the sweat and looks in to get his sign on what he's going to throw here with a one ball, two strike count. The one-two pitch to Lococo is swung on and it's lined in the left field. That's going to go to left center. Over comes Marty Carina who cuts it off, but not before Bradley will come in to score. And Lococo has himself a single. That was a line drive that went into left center field for a single. And easy for Bradley to score on that one. That brings up Joel Carranza, who has been all kinds of trouble tonight. He's got out once, and otherwise he's three for four. Diamond's hoping for a double play to get out of this one. There's only been one inning so far. We're in the sixth. There goes Lococo. The miss ball is li lined in the left field for a base hit. It goes right between the third baseman and the shortstop, and so now their runners at first and second with one out. Lococo was on his way. Uh, to second base. That may have pulled Mello a little bit towards second if he was covering. I wasn't, didn't quite see that, but either way, I don't think that was going to be stopped by anybody. That's a single to left. And so now their runners at first and second. A run in here in the sixth, seventh, the uh, sixth inning. It's 13 to 10. Martinez looks in. He now will face. Baptista, who is four for four. <laughs> four for four on his first trip back uh, and his first night of hitting, first night of playing this season. First pitch is a strike and it's no balls and one strike. Diamond's still hoping for a double play to get out of this. Runners are first and second and now there's a Bach called. So Bach is called a Martinez and that puts runners at second and third and eliminates that double play possibility for the most part. So Martinez must have kicked his leg one way and been ready to throw the ball the other because that's one thing that'll do it. There are a number of things that can do it if they think you're being deceptive out there on the mound. An 0-1 count, the 0-1 pitch 
This is inside for a ball, and it's one and one to Baptista. He's got runners at second and third. There is one run in here and one out. Martinez rubs up the baseball now. Peers in for his sign from Heiberger. Now he's ready to go. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on a miss. Strike two, and it's 1-2. and two. On deck, Daniel Comstock for the Stompers. He's got an odd line tonight because he's been on base three times but hasn't scored. And then flew out to center. 13 runs across the plate for Sonoma. Martinez has his sign. And the 1-2 pitch is swung on him. It's strike three. So now Daniel Comstock will step up to, race, up to bat. That's the first time that the Diamonds have been able to get Daniel Baptista out. He's now four for five on the night. Comstock walks up here. He's walked and he singled, walked twice, and flew out. So he's one for two and been on base three times. He comes up here with a runner at second and third. This pitch is a ball and it's one and oh. At third base is Matt Lococo. At second base is Carranza. They were at first and second, but a Bach moved them up. Now there are two down and two on. Martinez looks in it for his sign, and with a 1-0 count, he comes to the plate, and that pitch is swung on him as first strike, and it's 1-1. One -one. One, one count. 29 hits so far in this game. 29, 16 for Sonoma, 13 for Pittsburgh. Martinez likes the sign, takes this pitch. It was a slow curveball that landed outside, and it's going to be a ball, two balls, and one strike. There you can see Lococo in the background going back to third base, standing on it. He'll take his lead with Martinez looking in for his sign. The stopper's bullpen behind him there as he takes his lead. 2-1 count now, the 2-1 pitch. Ball three, and it's three and one. So... Martinez, a ball away from loading the bases here. On deck is Scott David. <laughs> Scott David. Scott David is on deck. Three balls and a strike now to Daniel Comstock, the catcher for Sonoma. That pitch is ball four, and they are loaded up. So... So that's a walk to Comstock. Carranza is on at second. On at third is Lococo. They're loaded up for Scott David. Scott David singled in the first inning, singled in the second inning, reached on a fielder's choice in the third inning, and doubled in the fifth inning. So he is three for four. Now Galetti comes in and has a word with Martinez, and he'll go back to first base. So here's a big moment because the Diamonds can either end this inning at 13 to 10 or more runs could score or maybe a whole lot of runs could score. We'll find out. Martinez against David, top of the sixth, 13 to 10, Sonoma. Base is loaded, two outs. Here's the pitch from Martinez, and that's a ball. It's 1-0. and One ball, no strikes. Martinez coming in here in the sixth inning. And he's been greeted by a lot of run base runners. This ball's to the right side. It's going to go into right field for a base hit. Here comes Lococo. Rounding third is Carranza. He'll try to score. And he comes in to score as the Diamonds fall down 15 to 10 here. Two run score for Sonoma. And a base hit to right field for Scott David to knock in two. So they did not get out of that part of the inning. 
Going on to second was Comstock, so now their runner's at first and second with two down. Martinez is now 15 to 10. Three runs have scored in this inning. There are still runners at first and second. They're going to try a pickoff play at second, and back in is Comstock. He's still on his knees there. Is, is he all right? He, he comes up, and no, he's not all right. He's going to take a walk. He may have hurt himself sliding head first back into the bag. He is going to take a moment and make sure that all body parts are functioning as they should. <laughs> and he, I guess he says he's all right, so he's going to go. Runners at first and second. Two outs. Stepping up to the plate is Eddie Moralora. The pitch to him is bound to the left side. Batista charges it, makes the play, tax steps on third, end of inning. So the Sonoma Stompers pick up three runs. They leave two, and at the end of five and a half, the score is 15 to 10. Dominic Taposian is back out here to pitch the bottom of the sixth inning for the Diamonds. The question is, as you go to the bottom of the sixth and you have got 13 hits and 10 runs, what do you think the situation would be? Well, the situation for them is that they're down by five runs, 15 to 10. There have been 25 runs scored, 30 hits in this game so far. We're going to the bottom of the sixth. They are down 15 to 10. Bautista, who just made that play to end the top of the sixth inning, unassisted put out at third base, will lead off. And Taposian comes to the plate, and it is a ball, 1 and 0. On deck for the Diamonds, Jordan Yellen. But it looks like Joe Lewis is up and has a bat to hit for him. This pitch to Bautista is a high fly ball to left field. The Coco is underneath it, and he makes the catch, and that's out number one. So it is Joe Lewis who will come up to hit. Lewis is a pitcher, uh, but he's going to hit for Allen here in the sixth inning. After Batista flies out to left, Joe Lewis steps in here. He's batting left-handed against the right-hander. Lewis is a graduate of Pittsburgh High School. Had a chance to speak with him yesterday and uh, happy to be at home. He played his high school baseball on this diamond. So... He knows it's ins and outs. But how much does he know about Taposian, the new new pitcher for Sonoma? We'll find out. Here's the pitch to him, and it's low for a ball. It's 1-0. Chad Heiberger is on deck. Taposian has a sign. The pitch to Lewis. 
And that ball is outside for a ball, and it's 2-0. Two, oh. two balls and no strikes. I do not believe that we have any batting statistics on Lewis. If we do, it would be a surprise to me, and I don't see him anywhere on here. The next pitch is ball three, and it's 3-0. and oh, But I, they may not have any statistics, but the way they're pitching, it would appear they don't want any piece of him. 3-0 <laughs> and oh count to Joe Lewis up here with one out and nobody on in the bottom of the sixth inning. Here's the 3-0 pitch, and he takes that one for ball four. So Lewis watches four balls go right by, and uh, his pinch hitting, hitting appearance is A-plus as he walks his way to first base. Diamonds have a runner on with one out. So he's on at first base, Lewis is. Got his lead there. You know, it's just interesting. All these things, pitchers don't get batting practice usually. They don't get a chance to hit. They don't get the chance to run around the base pass with the designated hitter. Uh, so all of this stuff is something they've done in the past, but maybe they might be a little rusty on. Lewis with a big lead. He takes a little hop. That pitch is a strike to Heiberger. It's 0-1. He's being held on over there by Baptista. Taposian on the mound with a five-run lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Probably not too worried about Lewis. Here's the pitch to Heiberger, and that's strike two, and it's on two. Runner at first, one out. Now Heiberger is set to go. And the 0-2 pitch is swung on right up the middle, and it's going to go into center field, a base hit. Lewis on to second, and he'll hold there. And the Diamonds have runners at first and second and one out. And now they got a really a little rally going. Now they'll go to the top of the order with Corey Mello. Mello steps up here. He singled in the first. He grounded out and has struck out twice. So he's one for four as we go here in the bottom of the sixth inning with runners at first and second and one out. Lewis with a walk, he's at second base. Heiberger with a single to center. His third hit of the night is on at first base. And here's the pitch. It's a ball, it's one and oh. One ball and no strikes. Looking to see if there's anybody throwing in the Sonoma bullpen, and it looks like there might be. Maybe they're just getting ready. Here's a pitch to Mello. It's low for a ball, and it's 2-0. There's a, someone getting ready to throw. Either he's getting ready to throw or he's all warmed up. 2-0 count. Now we... That is Ian Walsh on the mound out in the bullpen for the Snobus. This ball is bounded to the left side. The third baseman, Maura Laura, has it. He throws the second for one. David throws on to first. And time, they say. And so that was a close play at first base, but the Snobus Snobbers get the double play call and end the inning. At the end of six, the score, 15 to 10, Sonoma.
We're going to the top of the seventh here at Winter Chevrolet Stadium. It is 15 to 10 in favor of Sonoma. Sonoma won the Pacific Association first half championship last night here, winning an extra innings. Diamonds fighting down to their last out, but could not get the tying run over in the bottom of the 10th. Sonoma winning the championship, but there are four games left here in the first half, and both teams using it to take a look at some different people in different positions. But tonight they have had a, a wild game with 25 runs, 31 hits. We're at the top of the seventh inning, and now Justin Martinez is still on the mound, and he will face Kevin Farley, who's been the shortstop for Sonoma tonight. Farley takes the first pitch for a ball in the 1-0 count. Martinez 1-0. That pitch is a ball and it's 2-0. Martinez came on in relief of Skylar Shaw Fuss, who came on in relief of Sam Agnew Wheeland. No one has had a particularly much success. This pitch is a line drive. Batista with a catch at third base. High up in the air he went, and he caught it at the web of his glove to put that uh, threat to die. That was well-hit ball by Kevin Farley, but he, Batista was able to leap up in the air and catch it at third base. That's why they call it the hot corner, and he was able to snap that line drive, and that's out number one. That's his second unassisted putout in a row. <laughs> he did had it at uh, the end of the sixth inning. He got a ground ball and stepped on third with runners at first and second, and now he gets that line drive, a great play. Here's a pitch, a strike. It's 0-1, just kind of a reflex play. There's the ball. you got to move to get it, and he did, and his timing was perfect, and he got the right high above his head. Marcus Bradley steps in here, and he gets a strike. It's 0-1. The 0-1 pitch fouled back, and quickly, Martinez is in front here, 0-2. Bradley walked in the second inning, struck out looking in the third inning, grounded out in the fourth inning, and singled, or walked last inning. I think he walked last inning. No balls and two strikes to Bradley. 15-10, Sonoma with the lead. The 0-2 pitch. That's a ball, and it's one and two. One ball and two strikes. Martinez with a sign comes to the plate. That's high for ball two, and it is two and two. The on deck here is Matt Hibbert in the top of the order. This is the seventh inning. Hibbert will be having his sixth at bat in the seventh inning. That's what kind of game it's been. 15 to 10, Sonoma. Bradley at the plate with a two ball and two strike count. And the 2-2 pitch is low for ball three. And that count goes full, three and two. Three balls and two strikes. Full count, Martinez looking in, and he is taking a long time. Now he's going to come to the plate, and it's fouled back. If you take that much time, usually the batter will step out, but uh, Bradley did not step out. He's, he stayed right there and fouled it back. Here's a, the, you can see the ball boy there trying to get balls to the ump, and he was a little quiet about it, I guess. He stood there with balls in his hands. He didn't notice him. <laughs> finally, someone else said something. So now they've got balls, and it's 15 to 10 stompers. 3-2 count on Marcus Bradley with nobody on him. One out here in the top of the seventh inning. Martinez to the plate. Pitch is fouled off the glove of Heiberger. The count stays, is at 3-2 and two now. Stays there. Full count. This game is now over three hours long, and we are in the top of the seventh inning. And that's how long it takes to score 25 runs. 
3-2 pitch. Swung on and line down the left field line foul. And we will continue at 3-2. and two. Bradley steps back in here. He and Martinez dueling. Three balls and two strikes. It's kind of what we talked about earlier, how you know there's individual pride on the line, even if a game doesn't necessarily count. Uh, the people are pitching and hitting, and it depends. You know, they want to do their best. This pitch is strike three called. So people are up there, and they're going to do try their hardest. That's a baseball thing uh, because all you know, those individual moments within the team game, and it's full of that. There are two outs now as we go to the top of the inning, and Matt at uh, top of the inning, top, top of the order, Matt Hibbert will come to the plate with two down, nobody on. Five-run lead for Sonoma. These two teams go to Sonoma tomorrow for a three-game series, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The last three of the first half. Here's the pitch, and this ball is lined in the left field, grounded actually on one hop into left field for a base hit, and that's going to be put uh, Hibbert on at first base with two down and bring Matt Lococo to the plate. Hibbert now has three hits in six trips. And coming up is Matt Lococo. Lococo walked, reached on an error, Single last time up. He'll be up here with a runner at first and two down. There is someone throwing with a coat on in the Diamonds bullpen. We don't know who that is. Pardon? Dennis Neal? Dennis Neal, apparently. Here comes the runner going to second. The throw to second is not going to be in time, and that is stolen by Matt Hibbert. As we've warned you before, Hibbert, a very fast runner, and one of the leading st stolen base people on the team, so that's not a surprise. He goes down to second. And now Heiberger and Martinez are going to have a conversation. Galetti is coming over to the – I don't know if, what the concern should be. Now, oh, Martinez's belt has an issue, and he is going to hand his belt – to Agnew Whelan, or is that Scott Shafus? <laughs> He's going to hand off his belt and get a belt donated by a teammate. That was Agnew Whelan. Gave him his belt. And that's not something you saw every day. We saw a picture earlier this year. I can't remember where that was or who it was. It was for the other team, but he kept having a problem with his belt. He had to keep buckling his belt and tucking in his shirt and you do that about, <laughs> about every half inning. Uh, now Martinez has his belt in place and there's Dennis Neal down there. Is he uh, getting... He's supposed to start, I think, over the weekend, so I'm not sure that he's doing this as a potential reliever or just getting some work in for his arm. But he is uh, throwing the ball down there in the bullpen. One ball and no strikes to count here to Matt Lococo. Play, play, off, play at second base and in safely is Hibbert. Corey Mello got the ball and made the tag, but he was not able to do it before Hibbert got back to the bag. So there's Hibbert with his lead. Still a 1-0 count on the Coco here. 15-10. Sonoma with the lead. Top of the seventh. Here's the pitch. And that's a ball. And it's 2-0. On deck is Carranza, who's been a monster tonight. Four times. She's had hits. Four out of five. <laughs> the Coco ready for the 2-0 pitch. And here it comes, 2-0, and that is a strike. It's 2-1. and one. There are two outs here in the top of the seventh inning. There have been no runs. Hibbert got a two-out single and then stole second. Coco trying to bring him home, but 
And the Diamonds trying to get out of here with a big zero on the scoreboard. That pitch is a broken bat, ground ball. It gets over Galetti's glove, goes into right field, rounding third is Hibbert, and he will come down and score. As that just was bad luck all the way for the Diamonds. As it got a horrible hop to Galetti, who went, who went down to get the ball, and it just bounced high over his glove and on into right field. Here comes the play, and uh, you don't get a shot of that ball in that replay, unfortunately. But uh, you do see them score. <laughs> 16 to 10 now that bounced over Gletti's glove and uh, he just had no way to to make that play it was broke the bat it's a broken bat single to right field for Lococo and now uh Carranza, Carranza will step up here as Hibbert scores and it is 16 to 10 there's the throw to first Gletti holding Lococo on at first base Carranza up here, and he, as I said, has been the beast at the plate with four hits on five tries, a throw over to first, and they do not want the Coco getting down those base passes because Coco has ten stolen bases on the year. He's been caught twice, so he is definitely a threat to go. And with a 16-10 to 10 lead, you know, it's just free time on the base pass because you start taking off with little risk. All you can you lead by six. Martinez comes to the plate. That pitch is high for a ball, and it's 1-0. and oh. One ball, no strikes. Top of the seventh inning. Throw to first. The, Co the Coco back in. The Coco with a single in the sixth and a single in the seventh. He has scored three runs on the night. Here's the pitch outside for a ball, and it's two balls and no strikes. Overall, the Stompers have scored 16 runs, 10 for the Diamonds. Lococo with his lead. Two oak count. Martinez taking a long time looking back at first, and and Carranza will step out. Here's the pitch, and Carranza fouls this one high and back and out of play. So that's a first strike, two and one. Two balls and one strike. Rudder at first, two outs. There's one run in here, a run that the Diamonds could ill afford to give. This pitch is swung on a miss, strike two. As we come into the late innings, the Diamonds down by six runs here. And they've got two goose eggs in the last two times up. Martinez as Lococo fakes and Carranza swings and fouls it away. Lococo started and then stopped. There are all kinds of theories about this with someone at first base in this situation. There are two outs. If you if you get caught stealing, of course you take the bat out of Carranza's hands. This ball's way outside for ball three, and so now it's a full count. Three and two, Lukoko will be running from first base with the pitch. The Diamonds. Now Martinez will have to come in here with the pitch. They don't have to, obviously. They could throw it outside the strike zone, hope that he swings at it, and if he doesn't, then they'll say, have a nice walk to first base. On deck is Daniel Baptista, and he's been a hot bat tonight as well. Four or five times he's had a hit. There goes Lococo. Here's the pitch. Right side bounded right at the second baseman, and he's got it and throws out uh, Carranza to get him for one of the few times tonight. And the Diamonds hold them to one run here. They leave a runner for Sonoma, and the score at the end of seven and a half. It's take me out to the ball game time. It's 16 to 10.
say Giants. When it's a shame. One, two, three strikes your eyes. <laughs> hey, DJ, start us, huh? Come on, man. Here come the Diamonds! We're ready for the bottom of the seventh inning. I hope you at home just got up and sang, take me out to the ball game with us. We're going to the bottom of the seventh with the score 16 to 10 in favor of Sonoma. B.J. Gwynn will lead off the seventh. He'll be followed by Wes Wallace and then Vinny Galletti. It's been a wild game so far. A lot of runs. Uh, Taposian still out here now pitching for Sonoma. He is the second pitcher on the night for them. I believe this is his fourth inning. He's coming here to work, and he's when swings and misses on that one, and it's one and one. He's pitched the fourth, fifth, and sixth innings, and out here for the seventh. That's a lot of work. This is a pitch. And that's a strike. It's one and two. So far tonight, Gwen with a walk and then a single. He reached on an error and then he grounded out. We point out he chokes up on the bat a bit. This pitch is whacked to the left side. Foul. Just added to the Diamonds lineup yesterday. He was a major player for the Diamonds last year, hitting in the mid-400s last season and earned his way up to a higher level and now is back here with the Diamonds just two days now. This pitch is fouled away. One ball, two strikes. Diamonds down by six runs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And now... They got Dennis Neal with his jacket off throwing in the bullpen for the Diamonds, and that's a swing and a miss by Gwynn, and he's out number one. Wes Wallace steps up here. He doubled the last time he was up. So the high fly ball, the center field that no one on Sonoma seemed to be able to capture in the lights or in the darkness or whatever it was, they lost it and it fell to the ground. He got a double. Here's a pitch to him, but nobody on and one out and the first pitch is swung on a miss, strike one. Vinny Galetti on deck. The next pitch to him is swung on a miss, strike two. Diamond started this game matching Sonoma run for run. It was 10 to 10 at one point. Here's a pitch. Swung and fouled away, and now it is 0 and 2 on Wallace. He, uh, but then Sonoma has scored six unanswered runs in the last three innings, and so it is 16 to 10 in favor of the Stompers. O2 count the O2 pitch. That's outside for a ball, and it's one ball and two strikes. Yeah. 
There's a diamond center fielder in here. One for four tonight. And the pitch from Taposian, and he swings and hits this one to left side, and that's deep to left field. Back of the left fielder, and he can't get this off the wall. It stays out there in the warning track. Wallace is on his way to second with a stand-up double, his second double in a row. He came up with, Wallace came up with one out and nobody on back in the fifth inning had doubled. Now he's here in the seventh, he does the same thing. And Vinny Galletti steps up to the plate. Galletti, two for four. Tonight, Wallace on at second base. Wallace got all of that one and hit it all the way to the wall. The Coco gave chase, but he could not get to it and uh, threw it back in. But Wallace was already at second base, standing up. To Posey with his sign. And here's the pitch, and it's inside for a ball. And it's one ball and no strikes. One out here and a runner at second. Gladi at the plate and Calderon on deck. Look back at second. One doubts Wallace will be trying anything. Here's a pitch. Galetti takes ball two. It's two balls and no strikes. Of course, that's what the Diamonds need. They need base runners. Down by six here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Taposian looks back at Wallace. Comes to the plate. This ball is fouled back, and now it's two and one. Nineteen hits for Sonoma and fifteen for the Diamonds. Thirty-four hits total, twenty-six runs total. Sixteen of those for the Stompers, who lead it, of course, sixteen to ten. Two balls and one strike to Galetti. The two-one pitch, swung on and fouled, and it's two and two. Someone's, I don't know if the rabbit is still out there, but the rabbit didn't do a very good job of fielding that if he was. <laughs> and there he is, right in front of the bullpen, from our perspective anyway. And he, he just stands, he amazes me that he just is not, not afraid of these human beings. He just he's actually just hangs out out there. 2-2 Two -two count to Vinny Galetti. Deposi and winds and delivers and throws this ball almost to the backstop. Comstack has to come leaping out of his crouch to get the ball, and now it's a full count to Gladi, three and two. Three balls and two strikes. There are people ready in the, or throwing in the Sonoma bullpen. There are people, it looks like Dennis Neal is ready in the Diamonds bullpen. This pitch is fouled back. Of course, we are in the bottom of the seventh. It's a full count now on Vinny Galetti. Runner at second is Wes Wallace with one out. The game is nearing three and a half hours. Ready? Bent at the knees. The pitch. Swung on a whack down the right side, and it's going to be a base hit to right field. Marcus Bradley almost overruns it, stops it, and throws it back in. And Wallace will stop at third. And the Diamonds have runners at the corners with one out. Galetti with a sharp single to right. That makes him three for five on the night. And uh, just as Karam Shah was saying earlier in the game, you know, he gets an outside pitch and he kind of rolls it, may go with it. You give him something inside and he will send it to the, to the right field fence. That wasn't quite the right field fence, but it was a line drive. And that will be it for Taposian, who will come out of the game with runners at first and third. And now the Sonoma's reliever. We will try to get a glimpse at his number. We, it's hard to see them when they're way out there in the left field bullpen behind the, f the fence. And especially since Sonoma only has numbers on one side of their jersey. So they have to turn around and show you their back before you can tell who it is. And they're out there having a conversation. Comstock, the catcher, and the new reliever, along with Miyoshi, the manager. 
And they're all talking, of course, with their mitts over their, over their mouths. And <laughs> he's just teasing us. But there it is. It looks like it's number 15, and it's going to be Ian Walsh, who we said was warming up earlier. Walsh, 6'3", 195. He's a right-hander. And he'll be coming in here to face J.Q. Calderon with runners at first and third and one out in the bottom of the seventh inning. So now I'm trying to find Ian Walsh on their pitching statistics, and I'm not finding him any place on their pitching statistics. I wonder if he is a newcomer to the lineup here. He um, may be his first appearance of the year. We're going to hunt this, that information down right here. <laughs> Here's Ian Walsh. Yeah, he has not made an appearance this year. All I can tell you is that he's from Clemens, North Carolina. <laughs> he's 6'3", 195. And this is his first appearance for the Stompers. He's going to come in here with two on and one out in the bottom of the seventh inning with a 16 to 10 Sonoma lead. If you are wondering where uh, Tony Schultz is, or the voice of the Diamonds, uh, he has is on vacation this week. So this is Scott McDonald and I am bringing you this whole game every, <laughs> every last second of it. And I, Ian Walsh has his warmups completed. So he is going to Face J.Q. Calderon, bottom of the seventh inning, 16 to 10, Sonoma. Two runners on there to Posian's responsibility. That's Galetti on at third. He got a single to right. Wallace got a double all the way to the wall. He's at third base. There's runners at the corners, one out. The pitch to Calderon. Inside, he goes all the way to the backstop. There goes Galetti on his way to second. Here comes the throw. Galetti's in there. He's out. He did not slide. He, he kind of put his foot out there. I thought he was going to injure his foot the way he went into second base, but he did not injure it. He did get out. And so that is one base runner who's not there. He, left, he saw the ball get back, and that was a situation with the backstop here where the ball is thrown hard, and it hits the backstop. It bounces right back to the catcher, and often... He's just got an easy time of it throwing someone out or, or getting a runner at third. Wallace did not break from third, but Galetti took off from first. It probably was not a bad gamble, but you can't tell exactly where that ball is sometimes. And so that's a second out here. And the Diamonds have a runner at third now, two down, and Calderon with a count of 1-0. and oh. The 1-0 -oh pitch inside. That goes to the backstop. That gets away from home. Wallace comes down, and he will score. So that ball hit the backstop and bounced away from Comstock up the first baseline. He had to run over to get it, and Wallace saw that and broke for the plate and scored. So that is a run for the Diamonds. It's 16 to 11. The bases are now empty with two down, and the count is 2 and 0 on Calderon. Walsh would come up to the top of the plate. He's pitched, has two pitches, and they've both gone past the catcher <laughs> to the backstop. That was a score on a wild pitch. And this one is ball three. It's 3-0. Three and oh. So Walsh has yet to find the strike zone as he has come out here. Looking in, the pitch to Calderon is swung on and fouled away, and it's 3-1. and one. Three one count. One run in, one base runner caught stealing, as it were. Two down now and nobody on and a three one count on Calderon. The pitch to him is swung on foul away, and it's three and two now. 
Three balls and two strikes. He steps back in here. Walsh now has thrown a couple of strikes. Gotten Colorado to foul them off. There's a good pitch at the a pitch, a good look at the new pitcher for Sonoma. And he comes to the plate. Three and two. And the pitch is swung on and missed. It was a foul tip captured by Comstock. And that is out number three here in the seventh inning. The Diamonds get a run. They leave nobody. And at the end of seven full, it's 16 to 11. Here we go, inning number eight. As we the game moves along here, it is 16 to 11. Sonoma with the lead. Coming up for Sonoma will be Daniel Baptista, Daniel Comstock, and then Scott David. As we are in the eighth inning, and the Diamonds have a new pitcher. Dennis Neal will come in and pitch for them. I thought he was going to be pitching in Sonoma coming up, but he is... Going to be on the mound here. Um, we had a chance to t spot, talk with Dennis before the game as one on one of those profiles we've talked about. And uh, fun to talk to him. He is a funny guy. This pitch is a strike. It's 0-1. One of the people that's the life of the team going through uh, old stuff on the diamonds. I found a picture of him putting a throwing a pie in someone's face. <laughs> the 0-1 pitch. That's... A ball, and it's one of one. Baptista up here having a big night on his first night back. He uh, he is four for five, I believe, so far, and he's been on base four times. Let's be clear about that. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed strike two, and it's one and two. So Neil, so far, this is his fifth appearance of the year. He is the first time in relief. He has pitched 27 and two-thirds innings before this, has 19 strikeouts and only five walks in those 27 and two-thirds innings. Here's the pitch. He's swinging and a miss by Baptista and tagged out by Heiberger, who lost the ball for a second, and that will be out number one. He has a record of two wins and one loss and, of course, has no saves, but in his first relief appearance here. Daniel Comstock comes up to the plate. Comstock has singled, walked, singled. He may have walked three times here. Let's <laughs> see. Here's the first pitch to Comstock, and he swings and misses a strike, and it's 0 1. Neal has one strike out here, and he's looking for number two with Comstock, 0-1. The 0-1 pitch to him. Swing on a miss, strike two. Comstock kind of asking, I think, if that last pitch that he swung out was a strike. I don't know what the answer was. 
I know what the count is. It's no balls and two strikes. The 0-2 pitch. Outside for a ball, and it's 1-2. and two. One and two. The one and two count from Dennis Neal. His pitch is did he hole off? Did he swing? No, he swung and it's out number three, out number two, strike three. So he's called out. I mean, he's out swinging. He tried to check his swing. He could not do it. Scott David will step in here. Scott David's been all kind of trouble tonight. Single, single, fielder's choice, double, single. That's his line. Up here for the sixth time in this game in the eighth inning. And he will step in facing lefty against lefty. Dennis Neal versus Scott David. Two down, nobody on. Neal to the plate. That's a ball, and it's 1-0. David steps back in here. Shakes the bat. We notice, notice how he handles the bat. He's one of the few people to do that. There's a pitch of ground to the right side. Foul. Watch as he'll, he'll, he'll wag the bat straight up and down. Most people go backwards and forwards over the plate like the direction you're going to hit it. But well, that's, that's the grand plan to hit the ball a long way. Uh, is it? That's what it is. <laughs> that you warm up? <laughs> Back is Karam Shah, owner of the Diamonds, and our cohort here, as Tony Schultz has gone, that is a strike, and it's one ball and two strikes. Yeah, David, uh, Scott David has a grand plan. You know, it's like a measuring of the hammer. Okay, <laughs> I think I got it. I think, okay, I think it's going to land right here. And look at that. Well, so look, at now he changed yeah. it. Now he changed it. Now, there he goes up and down. There he goes. Up and down. So it's, it goes both ways, I guess. Here's a pitch, so to speak. That was strike did he swing? Yes, he did. And that's the second time that that's in the you know, inning. The stoppers have tried to check their swing and couldn't. Bottom line is we're three and a half hours into the game. So and we, uh, <laughs> you think that helped the call? <laughs> well, Dennis Neal strikes out the side, and we're going to the bottom of the eighth with the stoppers leading 16 to 11. No. Sarah has a lot of amps. Bottom of the eighth inning, here we come. Javier Marty Carreno will be the first hitter for the Diamonds, followed by Bautista, and then, well, we don't know. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure what happened to the designated hitter position. Joe Lewis was in it. If Joe Lewis could still be the designated hitter. In fact, I see him with a bat, so I assume Joe Lewis is still the designated hitter. He walked there, coming in for uh, Jordan Yallen back in the uh, sixth inning. We're in the eighth inning now. It is 16 to 11 in favor of Sonoma. And Marta Carreno will step up to the plate. You can hear his walk-up music that is lively. Chad Heiberger said in his interview today, he says, you know, we've got a lot of Latin players on the team, and that makes for a lively clubhouse. <laughs> well, Marty Carreno steps in here with the Diamonds down by five, bottom of the eighth. The first pitch to him, a strike, and it's 0-1. Yeah, three and a half hours in now, three hours and 45 minutes into this game. Now it gets serious. Uh, <laughs> you know, the umpire's strike zone is going to get a little bigger here. And 
Everybody is feeling it a bit, but it's uh, Ian Wall spins his pitch by Marty Karenas hit to deep right field. Back goes Bradley, back to the warning track to make the catch. So Ian Walls served that one up to Marty Karina, gave it a ride to the opposite field, and he hit it to the warning track, but Marcus Bradley got back there to make the catch. He was not expecting that much of a hit. Um, so Bautista steps up here. First pitch to him is a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. The 1 0 count fouled back, and it's 1 1. Diamonds with one out and nobody on here. Bottom of the eighth inning. Joe Lewis, who came up as the designated hitter replacing Jordan Yellen, is in the on deck circle and is in still, still in that DH position. Bautista trying to get something started here in the bottom of the eighth, and Walsh will step off. He seemed spooked by something, Walsh did. <laughs> and now he's back there. The 1 1 pitch, he throws it into the dirt about a foot before home plate, and it's 2 and 1. Or. So that was not his best pitch of the, his uh, entry into this game. Two balls and a strike. The 2 1 pitch. That's a strike, and it's 2 and 2. Two two count. The two two pitches at the head of Bautista and back to the backstop. And he had to bend down to the ground to get out of the way of that one. And the count now is full three and two. He threw a couple of wild pitches last inning and yeah. won one. The ball bounced back to the catcher and threw out uh, uh, Galetti at second Galetti base. Galetti at second base. So he's been wild a little bit. And the first so two pitches he threw. You don't know the what you're going to get, you know. And then he th that ball is inside. Ball four. There goes Bautista. He might be happy to be out of the batter's box. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings up Joe Lewis, who is uh, came in to pinch hit for Jordan Yellen, a, a pinch hitter, and uh, I mean a designated hitter. He walked back in that uh, sixth inning, and he's up here again with a runner at first and one out. There goes Batista up to first base. Here's a pitch. That's inside for a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. They don't want to throw the ball to Lewis. They gave him four straight balls last time. Well, Lewis is a good hitter, um, better pitcher, but <laughs> a really good hitter as well. The 1-0 pitch, the ball two. You he has see, not seen a strike. He has good opposite field power. <laughs> um, actually, I, I think from what I can remember, he likes to go opposite field. Uh, well, he's got a lot of room in left center, that's for sure, because uh, the center fielder is playing slightly over to the right. This pitch hits him in the, f in the foot. And that hurts. And that was not what he wanted to have happened. And that will be it. Miyoshi's going to, I don't know if he's going to bring this guy out or what, but that's, Ian Walsh has been yeah, all over the place. Yeah, he's been all over the place. And uh, he got lucky last inning. And uh, he's really erratic. So Walsh will come out of the game. And I'm surprised there's not a big cheer from the, <laughs> the Diamonds dugout because they just send anybody. We're at this point, the Diamonds are just send anybody. <laughs> who wants to come? Who, who wants to come to play with Ian Walsh out there? That was dangerous. Um, just send anybody else. Doesn't matter who it is. So now, here comes the latest Sonoma ooh, Sonoma's uh, pitcher, and let's see if we can figure out who this is. We never know until we see his. Number. Making the pitching mound his own.
is a left-hander. And he will come up here facing Chad Heiberger with runners at first and second. Eighteen. Eighteen. Huh. Yeah. Zach Wendorf will be up here. He pitched last night. And he comes in here. To face Chad Heiberger with one out and two on. The Diamonds down by five, and they're in the bottom of the eighth, and they have got a breath of life here. This will be Wendorf's fifth appearance. He's pitched three and two-thirds innings, giving up three earned runs. His ERA is 7.36. And uh, has four strikeouts in three and a two-thirds innings and four walks. He'll come in here with Bautista at second base. Joe Lewis, who got hit in the foot uh, at first base. Apparently his foot is okay because he's still in there running. Zach Wendorf about ready to go here in the bottom of the eighth. Chad Heiberger will come up with one out. The inning started with Marty Carena almost hit the ball out of here to right field and that was out number one and then a walk to Bautista and then after he almost got his head taken off by one pitch and then Joe Lewis got hit in the foot so they're running the first and second Miyoshi no need manager. for the bulletproof vest anymore no. <laughs> Miyoshi came out and took Ian Walsh out of the game and Zach throwing Wendorf grenades in. at her guys uh, yes hyper it's easier to bat now they doesn't have to wear that vest <laughs> One out, two on. The Diamonds down by five. Bottom of the eighth inning. When Wendorf comes to the plate and he got a strike, it's 0 1. Zach Wendorf. Ball behind his back. Comes set. Here's the pitch. We can tell you this. He's gonna if he is that deliberate a pitcher, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> one ball, one he's strike. He's gonna kill these guys with the soft stuff. One, like, one count. Yeah, that just made a poof in the in the catcher's mitt, not a smack. One one count. Wonder if back to the plate. One one, and that pitch is high for a ball, and it's two and one. So Scott, how do you like your first year in the Pacific Association? I love my first year in the Pacific Association. I uh, have had a spectacular time, and it's been an incredible experience, and experience professionally and personally, it's been great. Does fulfill your expectations? Uh, beyond my expectations, at least as far as the opportunity is concerned, that pitch is a strike and it's two and two. I, I, the, the chance to work with the team and the chance to do the play-by-play -play has been spectacular. And I don't know if I've ever said this. I'm doing, I'm pursuing what I pursued out of college. I'm going back to that, and it's, uh, it's you know, it's hard to find somebody who wants a 59-year-old uh, intern. <laughs> Well, you're doing a great job here for us. That bitch is a line drive by base hit into right field. Bautista will go to third and hold on, and the bases are loaded as we're going to the top of the order. Well, you're doing a great job here for us, Scott. You, you're kind of holding down a uh, you know, position pretty much that uh, for the last two or three years we haven't been able to really you know, put together um, from the totality of the media perspective. You know, it's... it's uh, You've done a fine job for us. I want to thank you for that here on the radio. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, I've, I've, I've learned from other guys who do play-by-play -play that if you want play-by-play -play jobs, that media relations stuff is the key. That's right. <laughs> and, I've, and I've been doing that for, you know, 35 years or something, or you know, 25 years, whatever it's been. Uh, so that I didn't know would be such a, such, a, such a help, but I'm happy to do it. That's the easy part. This pitch is a strike. It's 0 one The bases are loaded. Corey Mello is up here. The di diamonds Tying are down run. by four by five runs. 
So the tying run, I think, is in the on-deck circle. But right now, Corey Mello could make it close. Heck, you figure they get a couple here, a couple next inning maybe, you know. <laughs> one out. The pitch to Mello outside for a ball. And it's one ball and one strike. Bautista is on at third base. Joe Lewis. Yes, that Joe Lewis, the pitcher who can his designated hitter tonight, is on his second base. He came in pinch hitting for the designated hitter. Chad Heiberger, he's got speed, is on at first base. One ball and one strike. And the pitch from Wendorf is swung on. And this is looped into right field, and it's going to fall in for a base hit. Everyone will go up 90 feet. Heiberger makes it into second as the throw goes in there. And so the Diamonds have scored a run, and the bases are still loaded. And we got B.J. Gwynn coming up. Mind you, he hit about 480 last year <laughs> for us. So we have high expectations. That was a looping line drive for Corey Bello into right field. They almost made a play at second base. They uh, did. You know, yeah. Uh, we talked about Heiberger's speed at first, and that was the difference. He was able to get down there and in the second safely. Now the tying run is at the plate. It's 16 to 12, and here is Mr. Gwynn. Left on left matchup. Zach Wendorf facing Gwynn. Base is loaded for the Diamonds. One out. The pitch. A ball, and it's 1-0. Oh. When the bases are loaded, every ball is just a tremendous amount of new pressure on the pitcher. 19 hits for Stoma. 18 hits for the Diamonds. Wendorf, 1-0 in oh, the 1-0 oh pitch. Strike one, and it's 1-1. Gwynn had a question for the ump. I'm not sure what the question was. He called it a strike, so it could yeah, be... His question confused. was, instead of vo vocally, he did it mentally. 1-1 <laughs> one, one count, the 1-1 pitch. is swung and a miss. It's 1-2. Wes Wallace is on deck. He's got two doubles in his last two ups. One ball, two strikes to B.J. Gwynn, best back here, his second game back for the Diamonds. The pitch to him. Swan and fouled off. They fought that one off. Um, Count stays at one and two. Weindorf's going to come back and uh, throw that hard pitch outside in the corner again. He'll try to do that, but... He'll take Gwen's advantage gotta, of that. Gwen's got to stay in there. And one, two pitch. It Low is, for ball. Two, two. I told you that he missed it. <laughs> he missed it. He went right back to the same spot where he got the first strike on. Well, that was one, two. It was one, two count. He could afford to miss it, I guess. But now it's an even count. He doesn't want to go to three and two with the bases loaded. They do have a four run lead, but. This is the tying run of the plate. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. He swung it. Lines into left field, and it is going to fall in for a base hit. And to score comes Lewis. Everybody moves up 90 feet, and the di Diamonds have the bases loaded still, and it is 16-13. Still only one out. <coughs> tying runs at second base now. Well, okay, tying runs at first base now. Yes. At third base, Chad Heiberger, who beat that throw to second base to keep things going uh, with that line drive to the right. Here goes Miyoshi. He's walking out to the mound. Uh, Heiberger is at third. Corey Mello is on at second base. And B.J. Gwynn, with that line drive single to left, is now on at first base. Miyoshi is going to have a conversation with Zach Wendorf. I don't know if they have anybody warmed up at the moment. For the Diamonds... I don't know why the Diamonds would want to take Dennis Neal Shirabi. out. DJ Shirabi. Warming up. Diamonds have two people warming up. So here's Wes Wallace. Wes Wallace Couple comes to play with the bases loaded. About... Bautista was down there throwing the ball for some reason. I don't know why. Here's a pitch from Wendorf. That's a strike. It's 0-1. Bases are loaded. One out. L1 count to Wallace. Bottom of the eighth. It's 16-13 to 13 now. Sonoma by three. The pitch. Swung on. a missed the strike, and it's 0-1. 
two at-bats ago. Wallace had a high fly ball to center field that no one could figure out, and it fell to the ground, and he got a double. Last time up, he smacked the ball all the way to the fence, and that was also a double. No balls and two strikes here to Wes Wallace. Here's a pitch. That's a strike. Strike three, and Wallace will sit down. Vinny Galetti will now come up with the bases loaded in the bottom of the eighth. Justin Lawrence is warming up for the Diamonds out in the bullpen. Dennis Neal pitched a perfect eighth inning for the Pittsburgh. I don't know if they don't want him to go any further or what, but uh, they got Lawrence warming up. Here's a pitch to Galetti. It's a ball, 1-0. Bases are loaded. Two down. Three-run ball game. And if you wanted anybody up in that situation, I think Vinny Galetti would be your choice. Letty has three hits on the night. He's three for five. And the 1 0 pitch. Ball two. That would strike. <laughs> 2 0. Oh. I mean, 1 1. I don't know. That, uh, two, uh, it's one ball and one strike. You're talking about an expanding strike zone. 1 1. Now there's 19 hits for each team in this game. 1 1 count to Galetti. Zach Wendorf on the mound. Here's a pitch. And that's a strike, and it's one and two. Diamonds have scored two in this inning to pull within three. Bottom of the eighth. They've got the bases loaded. One ball and two strikes. Wendorf ready to go. He comes set, and here's the pitch. Ball two, two and two. Calderon on deck. Calderon has been as hot as Galetti has been tonight. Looks in. The 2-2 two -two count. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and foul tip. Did he hold on to it? He did not, I don't think, and Galetti's alive. So Gladdy stays alive as a foul tip is not held on to by Comstock, who did a, has done a great job of that throughout the night. He's held on to about three of them, I think, so coming up to that one, and that one got away. So now it is Gladdy still alive. Two balls and two strikes. A diamond at every base. The 2-2 two -two pitch. That is ball three, and Comstock is able to keep it from going to the backstop. So now we've got three balls and two strikes. Two outs means the Diamonds will be running from every base, and this is just the action pitch of all time. 3-2 <laughs> yeah. count, full count to Vinny Galetti. Chad Heiberger is at third. Mello is at second. At first is B.J. Gwynn. Galetti at the plate with a full count. Zach Wendorf in the mound, and Dan Comstock is going to go out and talk to him now and have a conversation before this 3-2 pitch. Four hours in. Four hours in. <laughs> and then, and then when they, and what cracks me up is then they get to the extra innings, and then they're worried about speeding the game up. <laughs> four, with those new rules. Okay, it's four hours of baseball that we've enjoyed here tonight. Comstock is back behind the plate. The full count is full to Vinny Galetti. The 3-2 pitch. Everybody goes. That bounces up there, and that will score a run as Vinny Galetti takes ball four. And in to score comes Chad Heiberger, and it's now 16-14, to and the bases are still loaded. Three runs have scored in this inning. It's now 16 to 14. Two outs. Calderon is at the plate. Zach Wendorf on the mound. At third base is Corey Mello. At second base, BJ Gwynn. At first base, Vinny Galetti. The first pitch to Calderon is a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. Well, if you're going to be out here for four hours, you might as well win, I guess. <laughs> 
One oh cat. <laughs> what a catch to Calderon. That pitch is swinging a high fly ball to the right side. Actually, it's the second baseman, David, who says he's got it, and he makes the catch. So that ends that threat with the Diamonds leaving three base runners on base. They get three runs, but as they go to the ninth inning, it's Sonoma 16 and the Diamonds 14. We flipped the switch, yeah. Justin Lawrence comes in here to pitch the ninth inning for the Diamonds. He uh, will be placing Dennis Neal. Dennis Neal came in to pitch the eighth inning, and he struck out the side. Clearly, uh, they did not want to give him any more work, so they got that one inning in, and that was it. Now Justin Lawrence will come in for his tenth appearance this year, 13 and two-thirds innings he's pitched. Given up five earned runs, or six earned, no, five earned runs, excuse me, six runs, five of them earned in a 3.95 ERA. In 13.2 innings, he's had 11 strikeouts and five walks. He's got a 1 1 record. So he comes up here to face Eddie Moralora, who takes a ball, and it's 1 0. Yuki Yasuda. It was Yuki Yasuda in there? Yuki Yasuda is pinch hitting. I'm pinch hitting, right. okay. Yasuda, Umpire who's usually the second the baseman. Out to tell us, but yes, uh, it is Yuki Yasuda. Yasuda is here at the batting for Moralora. Kevin Farley is scheduled to be on deck. And then Marcus Bradley, the seven, eight, and nine positions in the batting order. That pitch is a ball. It's two balls and no strikes. Not sure why Moralora, they pinch hit for him. He's, yeah, but Yasuda has a familiar batting stance with that bat held high over his head. 2-0 and count, and that pitch is a strike, and it's 2-1. Two, two balls and a strike. Top of the ninth inning, 16-14. to 14, Sonoma with the two-run lead. They had a five-run lead, but the Diamonds got three there in the bottom of the eighth. Lawrence kicks and delivers. That pitch is fouled away, and now the count goes even to two balls and two strikes. Diamond's got a run in the bottom of the seventh, three in the bottom of the eighth. It's now 16 to 14. And they can go into that bottom of the ninth if they hold them here with a reasonable chance for something. But if they can hold them here is a big question. There have only been two innings with a zero on them for Sonoma so far. Oh. 
Lawrence to the plate. Then that pitch is foul tipped, and I think Heiberger could not hold on to it, so that is going to be another chance at life for Yasuda. 2-2 Two -two count. <laughs> 30 runs in this game, 38 hits. Gave, gave up that safety in the uh, fourth <laughs> inning. Yes. Kick and deliver from Lawrence, and he sort of swings and fouls it off. An effort to get that one, but unsuccessful over there among the people in the chairs outside the dugout. So the count stays at two balls and two strikes. <coughs> we are on our f past four hours now for this baseball game as Justin Lawrence looks in at the sign from Heiberger, 2-2 two -two count, top of the ninth inning. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Yasuda's high, ball three, three and two. Nobody throwing in either bullpen at the moment. The final home game for the Diamonds in this first half of the season. This pitch is swinging and he should hit as high and foul, and it's going to be out of play, it looks like. Yeah, Marty Carina comes over to take a look at it, but it's over the fence and out of play, and count will be three balls and two strikes. Three two count. <laughs> three two pitch. Hits the plate. Ball four and Yasuda is on. <laughs> that, that's a hell of a pitching wedge. That went a long way. <laughs> that was a walk. Yasuda on at first base. Kevin Farley steps up here. The Diamonds have been playing this game with a not their usual double play combo out there. Garcia and Valdez have the night off. So Corey Mello and B.J. Gwynn are at shortstop and second base. Bautista is at third and Galetti is holding Yasuda on at first base after he walked. There's a pitch and it's a strike and it's a 1-1. Kevin Farley has struck out twice, walked, and grounded out and popped out. No balls and one strike count to him. Isuda has seven stolen bases, so he is a threat to go there at first base, and he does not go. This pitch is a check swing ball, one ball and one strike. Justin Lawrence in here to pitch the ninth inning for the Diamonds. He's given up a walk. Now with nobody out, facing Kevin Farley, who's playing shortstop tonight for Sonoma. This pitch is a ball, and it's going to be two balls and one strike. Sonoma clinched the first half championship last night here. So we've got four games left. The Diamonds playing tonight. Diamonds and Sonoma playing tonight here in Winter Chevrolet Stadium. And then tomorrow, they'll start a three-game series over the weekend in Sonoma that will end the first half of the season. And the second half of the season starts on Tuesday. All the teams will be 0-0. Uh, you won't see that in the standings, but they will be 0-0, and, and there will be a second-half champion crowned. The first-half champion is Sonoma. The second-half champion would play Sonoma in a one-game playoff if it's different, if it's not the Stompers again. There goes Yasuda. This pitch is fouled off down the left field line, and it's 2-2. Two and two. So Yasuda on his way to second base on that pitch, but it was fouled off, and so he will go back. The count's two and two on Farley. Marcus Bradley is in the on-deck circle.
Two balls and two strikes. Yasuda does not go. This pitch a line to the left side. Barney Carina goes back, 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 back. Can he get there? He does. He makes the catch. So that's out number one, and he had to get back there in a hurry to make that catch, and he did. Throws it back in. Yasuda gets back to the first base in a hurry, and so there's one down, and here comes Marcus Bradley. That ball well hit by Kevin Farley, but he did not get any breaks because it was right at Marty Carina, who just went straight back to make the catch. Marcus Bradley will step in here. He has walked twice. He has struck out looking twice. Singled once, I believe. Well, it's now he walked. Okay. And grounded out. Stepping up here with Yasuda. Still at first base now with one down. A lot of speed here at both the first base and at the plate for Sonoma. So it'll be tough to... That's a tough call to double them up, but that's exactly what the Diamonds are looking for. One out, a walk, and a fly out so far here in the ninth inning. Throw to first, you suit it back in. One-oh -oh count to Bradley. Lawrence comes set. Looks at first, comes to the plate, and that is going to be ball two, two and out. It has been a wild game, 16 to 14, Sonoma leading. The Diamonds and Stompers exchanged runs until it was about 10 10, and then Sonoma ran out with six runs, unanswered runs. Now the Diamonds have come back with four to make it 16 14. This pitch to Bradley is fouled back, it's two and one. So it went 10-10 and then 16-10, and now it's 16-14. Diamond's trying to keep it close, as close as it is, so they have a chance in the bottom of the ninth inning. Bradley in here with a 2-1 count. The 2-1 pitch. That's a ball, and it's 3-1. Inside, too far inside. 3-1 count on Marcus Bradley, who plays right field. Steps back in here with Yasuda on at first base. Lawrence set to go, 3-1 count. The 3-1 pitch. There goes Yasuda. The pitch is high. Heiberger throws to second. And the ball goes out of the glove of Mello, who had it in time, I think, to tag him out. But the ball left his glove when he made the tag. And so Yasuda is on a first, but Bradley walked anyway. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> so that's a, lot of, that's a lot of nothing happening down at second base. Uh, so Yasuda's down there after Bradley walks. And there are runners at first and second. And so Hibbert comes up here with runners at first and second. One out. And that's more speed. Hibbert's fast. Bradley's fast. Yasuda's fast. That's a lot of speed. <laughs> Diamond's trying to keep it close here, but now they're in trouble with runners at first and second. One out. These players have all had about a career already. They've This is Hibbert's seventh time to the plate in nine innings. The pitch. Swung on. He lines us to the left side. And Marty Carina is not going to be able to make the catch. He comes in charging. And here comes the throw to the plate where Yasuda's trying to score. And he's safe. And right there to watch it is Justin Lawrence who thinks, no, that was not true. That had to be an out. But... Heiberger applied the tag as Yasuda sped by and slid by, and that was called and I, that was called safe at home plate. And Heiberger's not happy about it, neither is Lawrence, but the umpire says that's the way it is. Let's look at a replay here, and you can't really tell from the replay where the foot was, but uh, that is a run. So now it is 17 to 14 on that line drive single. And there are runners at first and second now.
At second is Marcus Bradley. At first is Hibbert. Now someone is up and throwing in the diamond. But that was Jose Garcia is up and throwing in the diamonds bullpen. <laughs> Matt Lococo fouls off the first pitch. And it's 0-1. There's one out here. Runners at first and second. That line drive and landed in front of Marty Carina, but it gave him a chance to charge, and his throw home to the plate was a good one. And Heiberg able to apply the tag, but they say Yasuda slid in to home plate before he got tagged out. This pitch is grounded to the right side. Galetti is over there, and he snares it. Can he get him in time? Yes. There at Lawrence on the first base bag. Made a good job of getting over there to cover the bag as Vinny Galetti got that ball as it tried to bounce away from him like an earlier ball did. That wasn't as high, but he able to reach out and get it at the last moment, and he just flipped the ball to Lawrence, who was there at first base for out number two, and the runners move up. So that was a good play by Galetti and a good play by Lawrence to cover the bag. So Hibbert goes up to second base, and now Marcus Bradley is on third. There are two down, and the Diamonds have a chance to shut the door on this at a three-run lead here. Uh, now Garcia is out pitching. <laughs> Jose Garcia is out on the bullpen mound, and he is throwing the ball like a pitcher. So who knows if he'll be the next guy to come in here. Uh, if this gets out of hand anymore, I guess we might see him. But right now we're going to see Joel Carranza step in with runners at second and third, 17 to 14. It's, again, one of those situations where you're down by three. Carranza could make it a five-run difference. Or they could get him out and go on to the bottom of the ninth. Let's see. Lawrence kicks and delivers. That pitch is swung on a miss. A strike, and it's on one. Oh, one count. Lawrence takes a long time looking in there. Carranza just asks for time. He says, and shakes his head like he can't believe how much time is being taken. But it's working so far for Lawrence, to a certain extent, anyway. Here's the pitch from Lawrence. Swung on him, missed. And that's a strike two. No balls and two strikes on Carranza. Runners at second and third. Two down. One run in, 17 to 14. Sonoma with the lead here in the top of the ninth inning. Lawrence, 0 and 2 count on Carranza. He comes to the plate. Ball, 1 and 2. I was outside and maybe placed there just to see if Carranza would bite. He didn't bite. So with the count, one ball and two strikes. We'll go again. And it's kind of a, a waiting game here. Now he's. Gets into his motion, Lawrence does. A little bit of a motion. He comes set again up, and then Carranza calls timeout, and he'll step out. More than just a waiting game, maybe kind of a, a game of calling time, trying to interrupt the timing of Lawrence. I think Lawrence could be delaying his pitch just to interrupt the timing of Carranza. 1-2 count, the 1-2 pitch is high for ball two, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Hey, right now, here we go. Two balls and two strikes, and... So whatever, after an 0-2 count, sometimes you play cute around the strike zone, but you don't do that when it's two balls and two strikes. So we'll see what happens, although first base is open, and Carranza has been a pain, but Baptista, who is on deck, has been as much of a pain tonight. This pitch is swung on and 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 foul tipped, or no, lost by Heiberger for a second, so he throws him out, and that's a strikeout to end the top of the ninth inning. The stoppers get a run. They leave two. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. The score, Sonoma 17 and Pittsburgh 14.
We're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. It is 17 to 14 in favor of Sonoma. The Diamonds batted around in the eighth and got three runs. Then they gave up a run in the top of the ninth. So the two run deficit that they had climbed up within became a three run deficit again. 17 to 14. Bottom of the ninth inning. Javier Marta Carena will step up here. He let off that eighth inning and flew out. Bautista will follow him. And then Joe Lewis has been the designated hitter spot. And we haven't seen him come out yet with that bat. So we think that it'll be Joe Lewis, but we're not sure. Lewis has drawn two walks. and He hit by a pitch the second time. Sorry, walk and hit by a pitch. Here's Marty Carena. He steps up here. Bottom of the ninth, first pitch, his curve, first strike. And it's 0-1. Slow curve came into that strike zone, and it snowballs in one strike. Marty Crane, a double and a single in five trips to the plate so far. The 0 1 pitch to him is a ball, and it's 1 1. One one count. The 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on a popped up foul into right, in right field and can the first baseman makes the catch. Baptista catches the ball with one hand as he's running down the foul line. I think it was a fair ball, but no matter, it was an out. And uh, that was a good play by Baptista as the first baseman had a tough catch down that right field line. So now Baptista will step in here for the Diamonds. He reached on an error, he doubled. He grounded out, he flew out, and he's got to walk. Nobody on. Diamond's down by three runs. It's the bottom of the ninth, one out. They, of course, need base runners. Bautista up here, and he swings and fouls this off, and it's 0-1. <laughs> and there's nobody in the on-deck circle for the Diamonds at the moment. Uh, Joe Lewis was the designated hitter, and now here comes Jose Garcia into the on-deck circle. One out, nobody on. 0-1 oh, count about TC, the 0-1 oh, pitch is outside for a ball, and it's 1-1. One, one. One, one count. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike two. That one fell in there, one and two. This has been so many games, so many things have gone on in this game when you score 31 runs and have 39 hits. This pitch to Bautista outside, two and two count now. Diamonds down by three. They need a couple base runners at least, or three straight home runs. <laughs> two, two count. And here's a 2-2 pitch. Swung on a miss, strike three. Bautista went out to try to get that ball on the outside, and he could not get to it. So that's out number two, and Jose Garcia will step up here with two down and nobody on in the bottom of the ninth. So Jose Garcia steps up here in the ninth inning with two down and nobody on. Pinch hitting for Joe Lewis, who was who was the designated hitter. He pinch hit for Jordan Yalen two times ago. It's a left-hander, so they sent up the right-hander uh, Garcia, and Garcia takes a strike, and it's 0-1. Lewis was the left-hander, and with left-handed pitcher now is Wendorf up there. You see the right-hander. Garcia step in. No balls and one strike to the usual shortstop for the Diamonds. And this pitch is way outside for a ball, and it's 1-1. Two outs, nobody on, bottom of the night, 17-14. to The Sonoma Stompers leading tonight over the Diamonds. The 1-1 pitch. Swung on a miss, strike two, and the Diamonds are down to the last strike tonight. 
This game is now at four and a half hours. The pitch to Garcia is swung and fouled away, and it's one and two, and almost a good play over there, but bobbled. <laughs> one ball and two strikes. Garcia battling here to stay alive and keep the Diamonds alive. The marathon game. Like I said, if you're going to be out here for four and a half hours, you might as well win. 17 to 14, Sonoma, 1 2 count. Two down. The 1 2 pitch. Swung on and fouled at the plate, and he stays alive at 1 and 2. One ball, two strikes. Zach Wendorf trying to close it out here for Sonoma. He comes set and comes to the plate one, two, and this pitch is a ball, and it's two balls and two strikes. Garcia battling Wendorf. The last hope for the Diamonds, and Wendorf just trying to shut it down, but Garcia's fouled it off, takes a ball, and that's the last one. It's 2-2 two -two count now. The 2-2 two -two pitch. This one is swung and fouled down the left field line, and that's also the count stays at 2-2. Two and two. Two balls and two strikes to the Diamond's regular shortstop, getting a rare off night, and then all of a sudden he comes in here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Here's a pitch outside for a ball, and it's a full count now to Garcia. Three balls and two strikes. Chad Heiberger is on deck. He will come in up to the plate if Garcia keeps it alive. Three balls and two strikes, and Wendorf is set to come to the plate. Here he comes, full count. Pitch is whacked to the right side, but it's a one hopper to David. David stops it, throws to first. He got him. And that's the end of the ball game. And what a ball game it was. Endurance contest, four and a half hours, 31 runs, 17 of them for the Sonoma Stompers, who went 17 to 14. They had 20 hits, 19 hits for the Diamonds. The uh, Both teams had two errors. I don't even know where to start. It was just so many different things happened uh, in this ball game for such a long time. But at the end, the Diamonds came close, could not hold on to that two-run deficit. And at the end, they just kind of collapsed here in that ninth inning. They got nobody on base no, and nothing across in the bottom of the ninth. They lose 17-14. to 14. Thank you for joining us, Tony, and thank you for sticking it out if you're still with us. Uh, for Tony Schultz, who will be back next week, I'm Scott McDonald. We'll be tomorrow night at Sonoma, game time, 7 o'clock. I hope you can join us then. Thank you, and have a good rest of your night.